coming up on the DMT One to One Show episode 52 on the 20th of March 2014, an interview with William Coates, CEO at Digital Tunes. This week's show is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com. And by MusicGraph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or developer.musicgraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT 121 show and this week it's a real pleasure to have on the show William Coates, CEO of Digital Tunes. So hi William and thanks for, having you on. Uh, thanks for coming on, how's it going? Hi, yeah good thanks. All good, excellent. So uh, you're from uh, calling in from Helsinki. So uh, Digital Tunes is, a, is in a, a digital download store and it has a quite a long history. So uh, first of all, what is it? Yeah, so we started running in 2006. Uh, and basically, me and a good friend of mine, Glenn, who's a drum and bass DJ, uh, back in those days, there was very little on offer for uh, electronic music DJs. And we just sort of thought, you know, why don't we just build our own store? And uh, that's what happened, basically. It was just kind of a idle chat over a pint and... Uh, we ended up kind of building the store that summer and uh, we launched, I think, uh, end of 2006 or, or, no, actually it was end of 2007. Right. Um, and, it, you know, it started off quite a kind of small side project. We never really knew how big it would get. Yeah. Um, but then things kind of took off and it sort of uh, started growing quite organically and uh, it kind of... Uh, surprised us in a way so yeah you know now, now it's got to the stage where it is now yeah of course and, and so uh, how have you seen it progress i mean i, I would imagine that uh, you know when you started it uh, you know of course electronic music was big but it's just gotten so much bigger uh, now so yeah yeah has has it have you seen like a, a big growth uh, uh, in the last sort of three years uh, ever since the the whole uh, edm i hate to say the word but it has to be mentioned thing has, <clears throat> has started and how has mm. that impacted the, the site as well well, probably for us, it's not like, hasn't made a super big impact because we're kind of very niche. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we do stock some of that stuff, but I think most of our customers aren't really into what you would call EDM. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we've always been kind of quite niche and sort of underground. Uh, and we sell a lot of drum and bass and nowadays yeah. bass music. Uh, so it's kind of perhaps not really the same market. Of course. And so, uh, but well, you were one of the first stores actually to offer, uh, uh, you know, uh, lossless downloads as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, how did that come about? And of course, back back in the day when you started it, uh, it we were talking about different uh, also connections and different speeds. And so it must have been a, quite of a challenge in terms of servers. You know, you didn't have the cheap Amazon S3 servers that you can have now. You know, you had, probably had to build your own and that must have been a challenge, right? Yeah, well, I mean, things have changed a lot. I mean, storage costs get cheaper by the year. Yeah. Um, and we've kind of been through multiple different configurations. Um, I mean, nowadays it's great because, you know, it's pretty cheap to get a lot of storage. But yeah, it was kind of challenging in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. uh, but having said that also, we were always quite smart with, with technology. And, uh, you know, we, we stored the masters in flat format. Um, which is like half the size of Wave. So, y you know, you don't need a huge amount of storage. You can be smart and kind of cut things down that way. Yeah. But, but we always thought it was really important to offer the DJs the best quality possible because at the end of the day, the distributors were sending us uh, like CD quality masters. So why not offer it for sale? And we didn't want to, you know, we were DJs ourselves. And we didn't want to take the piss, basically. Yeah. And uh, so we thought we'd offer them decent prices. And uh, I think now, actually, a lot of people shop with us because we do offer, for a single price, uh, lossless downloads. So yeah. it's a pretty good deal for the, for the DJ. 
Absolutely. And so t talking about, you know, the story of the company, uh, there's always a moment, I guess, in, in any uh, startup or, or company in this field where, you know, you feel like you've hit something in the sense that you maybe you had one release or uh, an artist come on board, a DJ come on board where you started shifting a lot more companies mm. than you had to than you had before. So is there a moment for you that you can pinpoint where you thought, oh, well, this is actually getting some traction where we're selling like a, 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 like a, a considerable amount of copies here? Yeah, well, I think what sort of lifted us out of obscurity was kind of the whole dubstep phenomenon. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a few labels that signed directly with us because we have an online sign-up procedure, so right. anybody can come along and sign up. And we were lucky enough to get a couple of little labels that nowadays are quite respected. They have some respected artists on them. Yeah. Um, and so basically, just through that, we kind of got quite big in the whole dubstep area and we got a lot of exposure through that so i think that was really what propelled us into kind of being a kind of proper store that could survive and make money yeah yeah sure and so have you seen uh you know one of the things that happened between the time you launched and uh, uh the and where you are today is uh, the rise of a couple of interesting sites when it comes to to sharing music and uh, one is soundcloud which is uh, yeah of course uh you know started in 2008 so a couple of years after you started uh, and of course it's a free way of, of sharing music around the web and, and the other one for djs especially is mixcloud so how have uh, those two sites impacted the way that you work and have you seen djs use both in different ways as well as of course uh, uh selling uh, their music uh, th through your store yeah well i i'm not sure exactly the direct impact but yeah. obviously it's soundcloud and mixcloud are both super important tools for djs and producers and we also use soundcloud uh, to promote uh, our music and for example we've got our record label coming out you know we we're definitely going to have all the tracks on soundcloud um exactly. But you know, as I don't know if it's really a competition with us. It's more of a kind of addition. Yeah, I would exactly. Say. No, that's what that's what I meant. You know, it's kind of a supportive role because, uh, you know, of course, on Mixcloud it's long mixes and you can't download anything. On SoundCloud, you, you do get the yeah. option or to to just stream. And so that that's uh, definitely can be an, an interesting com complement to but, to what you're doing. But then, having said that, uh, you know, some producers, I'm not sure if it's just paranoia, but they they think that oh, you know, never have your whole track there because right. it's quite it's quite easy to rip and even though if it's not high quality you know some people that's good enough so yeah you know there's rumors that that can affect sales but <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, you know, today we're, we're here talking about uh, sort of a redesign of the store as well. So mm. uh, uh, when did you start toying with the idea of, of doing this? Uh, and, and what kind of objectives did you have in mind uh, uh, when you set out to, to redesign the store? Yeah, well, it's been in the back of our minds for, I don't know, a couple of years now. I mean, We've kind of tweaked the site over the years, but the, the basic layout hasn't changed since 2007. Right. Uh, and, you know, the web has moved on a lot, um, especially when it comes to multiple devices with different um, screen sizes, uh, device sizes. So we wanted the new store to kind of really make sense in the modern world. So you could use it on your tablet, you could use it on your smartphone. Plus, we wanted really nice big cover art because, you know, it's not, we're not in the 90s anymore with, you know, dial-ups, dial-up modems. Yeah. We can, you can have nice big cover art and that's just fine because everyone's got nice fast internet speeds. Even on your smartphone, it's not that bad because we were all on 3G. Right. Um, so, yeah, we, we wanted something really beautiful, um, really simple to use. Um, and I think we've achieved it to some extent. I'm really happy with it. That's great. And you're talking about cover art, of course, uh, uh, one of the, you know, you kind of like there's a feeling uh, a little bit of uh, emulating the experience of, of, of browsing through vinyl. Uh, yeah. On the new store. So was that something you were going for specifically? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, for me, you know, I used to, I used to buy vinyl, which is kind of ironic, but yeah. I don't anymore, of course. Um, but uh, I love that feeling of, of browsing through vinyls in the record store because it was very kind of a tactile thing. Uh, right. You know, you, you just could, you could almost see from the cover art clearly like what the record was all about. 
And, you know, cover art is really important. Uh, and that's kind of something I think it's a bit sad that's been lost in a way in a lot of modern stores. And so we wanted to sort of resuscitate that. Right. Because there's a lot of information there. And you can even, I've noticed, you know, sometimes when I'm going through uh, doing the picks, doing, you know, doing the staff picks for the week, sometimes you'll see a release that you don't know the artist, you don't know the label, but you think oh, that's, that looks quite nice. And quite often it can actually be a really great track because if, if the label has gone to that effort with the design, probably they've also gone into the same amount of effort with the track. Right. Exactly. And so uh, looking at, you know, talking about doing the staff picks and stuff. And so uh, being a niche store, of course, the curation side can be a, a pretty essential to making sure that you get the best music out to yeah. the front. So how do you deal with that? Do you have, uh, you know, I, I can see that you have a, a bunch of different genres on the site as well. Uh, so do you have different people that deal with different genres? How, how do you structure that curation layer? Yeah, so basically, uh, there's three of us. Um, uh, Glenn deals more with the German bass. Um, I'm also doing German bass and then a bit of house, bass music, UK funky. And then uh, Marco, he looks after uh, house, techno, and then a bit of everything else. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, looking at uh, the payment methods, uh, one of the things that, uh, that struck me from the press release as well was the fact that uh, you are accepting Bitcoins now. So that's that's really interesting. I actually had a company uh, a couple of weeks back called Fan Distro, which is also one of the first music companies that is, is decided to accept Bitcoins as a form of okay. payment. So, uh, so tell me a little bit about uh, the process behind that and, and how did you decide to go for that? And, and how did you also talk to your artists about that move? Well, it's kind of an interesting story because actually in 2011, we got a customer asking if we would accept Bitcoin. Wow. And, uh, and I actually found that email again a year ago. And I'd, I'd replied to my colleague Marco that, oh, I checked this out and there's probably about, we'd probably get about five customers. So yeah. it's not worth, not worth doing now. But um, I was sort of aware of it since then and I've, I've been reading about it in The Economist and stuff. And uh, then when BitPay, which is an American Bitcoin payment processor, when they started offering um, their API, which makes it really easy to integrate, um, it, you know, it's, it, it took us like a day coding to kind of get integrated with Bitcoin. And they, they take care of all the complicated bit. Right. So when they came online, I thought, OK, you know, let's give it a try. I mean, nothing really to lose. And we've always felt that we wanted to be um, at the forefront, like technologically. And and for us, it's great because there's really low transaction costs. Bit BitPay takes one percent. And actually, if you if you want to opt for paying a subscription fee of thirty dollars a month, then you don't pay any transaction fees. Right. And that's really great in a business like ours. Um, you know, when the transaction size can be quite low, it can be, you know, a, a back catalog track is like 88 cents if you're outside of EU. Yeah. So if, you know, PayPal minimum fee is 35 cents plus 8%. Yeah. So, you know, you can see that just doesn't work. Uh, so this is so, so I just thought, you know, definitely worth trying. And actually, I've been really positively surprised because you know, some months we're getting like 4% of our revenues from, from Bitcoin. That's amazing. And, and How long have you had this integration going for? Um, since the start of last year, 2013. Wow, that's incredible. Like you must be one of the first uh, uh, guys to do that, right? Yeah, totally. And um, I mean, it's been pretty good for us because I, I decided at the beginning that we would actually hold the Bitcoins. We wouldn't convert to euros. So. Yeah. So not only have we been slowly getting little bits of Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin is, you know, skyrocketed, stuck skyrocketed in value. So um, exactly, it's been, it's been quite nice for us so far. <laughs> I'm of sure. It's, of course, it's always a bit risky, but you know. Yeah, I'm sure you wish you'd uh, you start accepting them in 2011 when they were worth nothing, and you could have just got yeah. 100 Bitcoins for a track, right? <laughs> yeah, I think then I'd be on hol holiday in Hawaii by now. Yeah, exactly. Probably uh, and be so a millionaire. You were talking about a subscription option. So uh, do, do you have that as well in the store? And, and how does it work? Oh, uh, no, that was just for BitPay. Oh, right. oh yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, no, we don't have any plans to go down the subscription route at right. this time. 
Right, exactly. And so, uh, you know, how, how do you see your, your user base? Are they, of course, you know, we're always talking uh, about the average consumer spend uh, in the music industry. Or, you know, this is, you know, we're talking a very, uh, about a very uh, niche audience of, of uh, uh, music fans that are probably also DJs themselves. And so uh, the yeah. music spend is going to reflect that. But how have you seen the music spend uh, change uh, per user uh, in the last uh, two or three years? Has it st stayed stable? Has it increased? Has it decreased? Uh, what have you seen? I think it stayed fairly stable for us. Yeah. Because I don't think our customers have really changed. You know, our customers are DJs or audiophiles, people that really want high quality music. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it's really changed that much, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, and that's, I guess, something that I was expecting in terms of the audience that you also have, it's, uh, uh, which is pretty set in, in, in that particular mean of consumption. And, uh, uh, you know, looking to the future, do, do you think that, uh, you know, w what are your plans? Uh, do you have a particular uh, marketing strategy to showcase the relaunch? Uh, or is it just word of mouth as it's been, I guess, up to this point? Yeah, I mean, um, we're trying a bunch of things. Um, We've got our new record label, which we're yeah. trying to kind of, which will organically spread the word about us. Um, and then we've been trying to get some news about the Bitcoin angle. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, an article on um, Coindesk, which was uh, it's like what, the biggest news site for Bitcoin. And um, in general, just kind of focusing on curation and 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 hoping that you know the word spreads because we think we've got some really great music there and i think nowadays it's it's all about curation i mean yeah you know you go to so many sites and there's just millions and millions of things so what people really want nowadays is a, is to go somewhere and there's there's quality you can see there's some quality choice there's some human beings that have said you know spend some time and pick some good stuff out Absolutely. And, and it's also, I guess, like the key uh, process here is, you know, you were talking, we were talking about uh, stuff like SoundCloud and YouTube, uh, like a key process as well is to, to define better, uh, more streamlined ways of converting people that are interested in buying material f from mm. those sites into, into your site so they can actually purchase the track. So uh, I guess things are progressing, you know, the, on YouTube, we're, we're seeing pretty good click through rates uh, from videos into, into, uh, uh, purchase uh, do you wish there was uh, anything else you know that that you haven't seen at the moment to facilitate that process yeah i'm not sure about that it's a good question um i mean it is surprising how much you how many sales you do get from this kind of organic traffic that maybe it's just they come to your site once and they buy that one track yeah through something like a youtube video um and obviously that's really important uh and it's really important to make sure you've got your search engine optimization sorted out. Yeah. So, for example, on Google, your search result looks nice. Um, and we've been working on that also with the new version. Great. That's fantastic. And so, uh, of course, the website uh, for anybody that hasn't visited it yet is uh, uh, digital-tunes.net and you can go and check out all the releases they have on there. And also, it's, it's a lovely looking site and you can browse through some great music. And so, definitely uh, worth uh, uh, spending five minutes, ten minutes and going and checking it out if you've listened to this whole show. And, uh, you know, it was a real pleasure talking to you, William. And, uh, you know, thanks so much for joining us. You too. Thanks for inviting me along. And thanks for listening to the DMT One to One Show. The show comes out every week. Also, go and check out digitalmusictrends.com for our news show, which is also weekly, where we talk about the latest news in the digital music industry. Thank you so much for listening. Have a fantastic week, and until next time.